Do you know what it's called when you get photos from your phone to your computer with a cable? It's called copying pictures, and I want to tell you some more definitions that might help you on your photo saving journey. I am Molly Bartelt. I own Pixology, where our team has helped save millions of photos, both print and digital, for our clients over the past 10 years. We've provided a lot of education over this time, and I have found that sometimes it's just the words and definitions that trip us up when we're trying to save our pictures the right way. So I'm going to share some definitions, <laughs> some verbs, and some file formats to help you on your photo saving journey. Now, if you're looking for a system to organize your digital photos and you have a lot of them on many different devices, I would recommend watching this video next. It's our system for how we organize digital pictures here at Pixology, and it relies on using a computer. And that's why reviewing these definitions is really important so that things kind of make sense. Let's talk about some words that pertain to your computer. Folders and files. I used to think these were the same thing, but they're not. They're two different things. Folders hold folders as well as files. Files are all of the individual items on your computer, from photos to video to audio, PDFs, Word documents, PowerPoints, and so much more. So folders and files are two separate things, and we want to keep that straight. We make folders to hold our photos, and the photos were the individual files on your computer. Next up, let's talk about backups, because you really should be familiar with this word, and you should be backing up your work on your computer, because disasters do happen. When you create a backup, which is a noun, it's backup is all one word. And when you're backing up, that's two words. So I will back up is two words. I am backing up is the verb, <laughs> and it's two words, okay? So that's backing up and backup. Lastly, often I hear people talk about digitalizing something, like uh, old VHS tapes, slides, things like that. The word that you probably want to use is digitize. It's easier to say, and it's actually the more proper word to use. Digitalize refers to like a more complex system being upgraded digitally. <laughs> and you can just go with digitize. Now I'm no English teacher, but there are some verbs that are used incorrectly that drive me a little nuts. And it's not our fault. Uh, our computers and our phones don't come with a manual to tell us exactly what we should do with our pictures. So I have six verbs that I would like to just to help people know exactly what it is they're doing when they're organizing pictures and they're doing these things. So there's three sets. The first set is copying versus moving. So when you're working on your computer and you're dragging photos from one place to another on your computer, usually you are moving your pictures. When you connect a device to your computer and you you take pictures from your device to your computer or vice versa, you are copying. It's copying the pictures in one direction or the other. A lot of times people kind of get that mixed up with my other sets of verbs like uploading and downloading. Uploading and downloading actually refers to things that you're doing from your device to a cloud location. So when your phone is taking your pictures and backing them up to Google Photos, it's uploading the pictures. And then sometime when you might be accessing those pictures on your computer from Google Photos, you would be downloading the pictures. All right, it's not downloading when you connect your phone with a cable to your computer, it is copying. So uploading and downloading is when things go up or down from the cloud. And then there's importing and exporting. Usually these verbs refer to when you're working with pictures in a program like Milio or Photoshop Elements. And you kind of have to observe what your program is doing with the pictures if you're bringing them in. Usually it'll say importing pictures. 
And that means it is bringing your pictures into the program and most likely leaving the original set out on your pictures folder or wherever you have them. Sometimes you can tell exactly what's going on and you wanna keep track. The important thing to know about having pictures in a program is any changes that you do inside the program, you really most likely are gonna to have to export the pictures out to view or use them or share them. So if you do a lot of cropping and changing the colors in the program, you will have to export it out. So importing and exporting relates to working with pictures in a program. So those are those six verbs that I wanted to cover with you and I hope that helps make it a little clearer. Now that we've covered verbs, let's talk about the different photo file formats you might come across. The oldest one in my mind, I don't know if that's true or not, is the bitmap, the .bmp. These are really small files that can be uh, exported or converted to a JPEG, but it's still not going to really help. If you want to make it large, it's probably going to look pixelated. And if this is the only photo that you have from a late 1990s moment, then it's better than nothing at all. Another file format you probably do have is the .png, the Portable Network Graphic. These are screenshots. So if you've taken screenshots of your computer or on your phone, these are what are produced as a .png. In my mind, most of these are probably not going to be family memories. Then, of course, we have JPEGs. We've been taking JPEGs on digital cameras and our phones for two decades. Unbelievable. <laughs> Time is flying by so fast. Your JPEG could be a .jpg or a .jpeg. They're the same kind of file, just one of them was produced by a Mac. Now they are compressed, but uh, for the most part, if you're not heavily editing JPEGs and the file size is decent, like over a megabyte, you should be just great <laughs> with saving that digital picture. Then Apple, in its infinite wisdom, about seven years ago introduced the hike file, the high efficiency image format. And this really kind of threw people uh, for a loop because all of a sudden you had these hike files on your computer and sometimes it didn't work to upload them for printing or using them in other programs. So frustrating. Apple created this so that people could fit more photos on their phone. That's why it's called high efficiency format. So it's also compressed and sometimes people end up with duplicate hike files and JPEGs because depending upon how the photo was uh, transferred from the phone to the computer, uploaded, downloaded, or copied or moved, the file format could have changed in that process. So it can be a little bit of a challenge there. Now for people who are heavily editing pictures, they may have TIFFs on their computer. TIFFs often are the result of scanning or uh, being used in a program and exported as a TIFF. TIFFs are tagged image file format. They are uncompressed so you can edit them over and over and you will not end up with smaller smaller file size unless your, your picture is physically smaller. Then there's the one that rhymes with TIFF but I'm not exactly sure how. Is it GIF or JIF? The GIF file, I'll just go with that pronunciation, is a series of photos that are looped. I've seen Google produce these as kind of a surprise in your Google Photos account. Like you can see here, I had a, a snowy evening picture and then you have live photos, which are different from the GIFs or GIFs. Live photos is another Apple invention where you have a moving picture. And when you get the picture from your phone to your computer, often and you end up with a single picture and then a corresponding video. And if you want to know more about dealing with live photos, watch that video up there. So that's live photos. And then some people might have raw photos. If you use a DSL camera, you'll know what this is. These are cameras that take pictures in a raw format so that you can heavily edit 
all sorts of aspects of the digital picture. Professional photographers, hobbyists use these kind of cameras. So uh, raw photos can be any number of extensions depending upon the manufacturer of the camera. And they'll need to be converted if you want to use them in a photo book or anything like that. The last format that I've seen is the WebP. And this is something I've noticed recently. When you download pictures that are on websites, sometimes they are WebP formats. That's a lot of file formats to keep track of. And that's just the pictures. If you would like to have a little cheat sheet of these definitions and the file formats, not only for photos but for video and audio check the link down in the description and uh, you can sign up to have that be emailed to you we've covered a lot the definitions and verbs and file formats what questions do you have about you know this tech stuff that you have put them in the comments below and i'll try to answer them in the comments or in a future video and that's all i've got for today thank you so much for watching we'll see you the next next time. <laughs>